You know when you look at your TV screen you see all the time Iraq, you know, and it's a place that's portrayed as a place of death, of iniquity, of war. And it is all that, you know, but it, it also, those kind of portrayals don't capture the sort of realness of the place, the reality of the place, the fun of the place and everything like that. So me and my team, we decided that we wanted to do something different and re-describe this very famous part of the world. So we went there, brought our own cameras to a little village, filmed with kids during Ramadan, but also give the kids cameras. So it's partly our impression of this incredibly moving part of the world but also the kids own portrait of that part of the world you know and there's a nice sense of us as filmmakers handing the, ca the camera over to them so uh, we arrive in this village um, and first of all we sort of film what we see you know uh, cattle, uh, sort of farming activity, all sorts of things. And then we set up a movie screen, we put posters on a wall, set up a movie screen and for the first time ever show films on the big screen in this village. Now it's a movie screen made out of sheets stitched by ourselves. Um, so these kids, young ones, um, for the first time in their lives see a movie on the big screen. So that was about I think that was at the end of the first week that we were there. And then the next day I went out and I said, right now it's your turn, you have to make the films now. And gave them little cameras and then they started to film stuff, their own lives, the farming community, their grannies, their granddads, all sorts of stuff. And so um, slightly, hopefully the idea was that we would inspire them to make films by showing some good films. I love filmmaking, you know, I've been making films for quite a long time, you know, I didn't think, you know, I didn't think I would ever do it, I just thought I wanted to be close to films in any way that I could, um, but um, it, it, this was a, a really not very easy shoot, you know, the heat, the, there's lots of stuff we didn't talk about, there were these sort of scorpions and all sorts of things, um, but in between action and cut, not that I had to say action and cut because there are no actors and it was me shooting, so I didn't have to say that, but in that moment when you're actually filming, I was <coughs> blissfully happy. You know, there's a scene that uh, where the kid, after we show the movies for the first time, you know, with the boy and the gun, you know, that scene, and I realized I was filming, right? It was shooting, but it was also interviewing, I was asking the kids questions, and I had to sort of move the camera to see what was happening. That one boy who was pushing everybody <laughs> out of the road, you know, he's, I really liked him, but he was pushing <laughs> everyone out of the road, and I thought, right, I'm going to punish him, so I'm going to pan, right? And I panned, right? But of course, he found his way back into camera, and then he was pushing people out. And these, the kind of adrenaline of that of trying to work out a form, a language, and you know, just to, what the what might be, what might capture what's happening, etc. Pure pleasure, you know, pure pleasure. I would say that when I watch films, even this one that I made, I'm really a child. I know I watch as a child and then think about it as an adult. I've always done that, you know, and and whether I watch my own work or anybody else's, I'm always it's always the same. Were the kids frightened by the singing ringing tree? Well, first of all, Malcolm, I was terrified. I remember I was terrified. By it. And the next day after we showed it, I went out and I said to them, what was that film about? And do you know what they said? I don't know if you remember, why you remember the film. They said, oh, you know, it's about a wee dwarf. <laughs> and in fact, that small gentleman, as we do, isn't a big part of it. It's about a prince and a princess, but they completely blanked that. They saw it as this, about this little gentleman who can hurl thunder bolts and all that sort of stuff. You know, they didn't seem even remotely scared by it, and they were wee wee wee, wee ones, but they didn't seem to be. You know, they, they they really liked it, and it was the picture they talked most about it, and then the Iranian picture the, the, about the red boot, and they uh, that they were the two that they talked most about. How did you, you choose the films that you wanted to take? They you? they were they're just my favourite kids, but I'm I I've I've got a kind of. I, I show those films an awful lot, yeah. you know, and the particular the Iranian film, The Boot, and um, Palat Alone in the World, the Danish film, and we have shown them in well, those things that that Matt and Tilda and I do around Scotland, we've shown them there. We we showed them in Somalia, and just last week, uh, I was asked to program in in Haiti, and um, for there's a kids cinema going around the camps in Haiti, and it shows lots of of. Uh, African films, but also put those two in as well, because they just, you know, yeah. you, when you're programming, you must know this, you've got some dead certs that are really good, <laughs> and those two are dead certs. Yeah. Uh, Mark, what about form, really? I know you're 
uh, fascinated by the history of cinema and by uh, different film forms, y you give the kids the camera, and although you focus on the one about the boy with the mud and, yes. and, and his imagine, imagination, other films that preceded it, there was a documentary, there was a verity one, there was, I think there was even a bit of a romantic comedy. Yes, there somewhere. It was. And, and to what extent did you kind of author those forms, or to what extent did they emerge just simply because the kids took up the cameras and discovered those forms for themselves? And yeah, that's a good question, Stuart. I mean, I think we probably got, I can't remember, maybe we got eight hours of footage from the kids or something like that. Um, and I knew there were certain things that I was interested in, you know, I, I wanted, it's hard there to get women on screen, so I knew I was more interested in women on screen, so I was delighted that the first, very first footage that came out in were those two ladies talking about the Anthal, you know, so I was really, really pleased with that. Um, I, I had said to the kids that I was, I had, there was a bit of a sense that uh, that the, the kids thought that this was their chance to bear witness with a camera, you know, in other words, to tell the story of their village, you know, so I encouraged them to say, you know, this little toy thing that you can throw, you can do anything, if you're going down to the river, take it down there, anything you want to do, so it doesn't have to be what we would call documentary or realism, you know, so I didn't have too many strong views of that, it was most the crucial thing was to take it as it came, you know, and if if there'd be lot, been lots of playful footage first and then really serious stuff, that's the order in which we would have shown it. But the really serious stuff came first and so that was the order. And in terms of another question about form was I knew the kids' stuff would be wobbly vision and handheld, you know. So anyway, anyway, I like a locked off shot where the soundtrack is really complicated but the picture doesn't move so that was the general idea of how to shoot it and then the children's stuff would in some way you know I would just sort of pass over to them. I think uh, time may have captured us here um, the conversation could continue in the bar or even at the kind of festivities that yes. are now beckoning but uh, please join me in thanking Mr Mark Cousins. Mark's film was absolutely magical and um, completely captured the sort of ideas of um, just the imagination of kids and I think it was it was an absolutely brilliant piece of filmmaking and I absolutely loved it and the, the wee pictures that the kids themselves shot while they were there were just gorgeous as well um, and for me it was the, the line in the film where he said the, the name of the country Iraq conjures images of you know sounds and um, things like that with for me, I think now that any time I hear uh, the name of Iraq, it's going to be Mark's sounds and images that are conjured in my mind. Uh, yeah, I loved it. Um, I thought it was the film that, that Mark Cousins was born to make, probably.